TVS recently announced the new Aero Race antennas. Ah. These. Up until recently, the all the antennas now are just wires covered in some kind of plastic housing. The new Aero antennas are PCB PCB based antennas that are flat. Since these antennas are so new, there's not a lot of information I can find on these. But what I could find, the air antennas are what's called MIMO antennas, or multiple input, multiple output antennas. MIMO antennas are have two or more antennas in a single package. So by using two antennas in one, the data and range are increased compared to the standard antenna with only one antenna inside. Um, with the same output, this one has more, um, I guess, better signal. The MIMO antennas were originally designed for Wi-Fi networks, but the Arum were adopted to be for uh, FPV ap applications. There are three versions of the Arum antennas. Polar S, the Polar P, Polar X. The Polar S is a linear antenna meant to be a super lightweight antenna. It only weighs two grams with the FLL, UFL connector. Since this is a linear antenna, I don't think these are legal at multi-GP races. The Polar P is a dual left and right polarization transmitter antenna and only weighs three and a half grams. Compared to the regular setup with a pigtail and an axis stubby, which weighs about 7.7 .7 grams, the uh, Aram Polar P setup with a UFL weighs half as much as the regular setup at uh, 3.5 grams. The Polar X is a left and right polarization receiver antenna. I'm really hoping this setup works well because I really love how low profile this setup is compared to my regular setup with a Triumph and a ugly patch antenna sticking out of it. Looks kind of like something like from the early 2000s. The flat designs of the antenna make them extremely light and pretty much have zero drag. I made a custom mount for my neutrons, which I'll be testing out the durability in the coming weeks. But for now, let's go do the initial test for the Aram antennas. In case you're wondering, I'm wearing a snowboard jacket and snowboard pants. I mean, why not? These things are designed to keep you warm when you're like riding a snowboard. I'm basically riding a snowboard on the street right now. So I'm just at the park now. I want to find a, a spot that has some sun because uh, last time came, I, last time I came out here, I was not dressed warm enough and uh, I froze my ass off. So I'm gonna look for a spot in the sun this time. I wonder if I could ride up this thing. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Here, there's some benches with uh, a place I can sit in the sun, hopefully. Seems okay. Maybe I'll sit over there so I can get a nice circular pa uh, flight pattern.
grass is really wiggly. So this looks like a nice spot. I'm not, I got a bench right here and it's nice and sunny. Uh, it's a little windy, but what can you do? There's a hill behind me, so hopefully it'll block some of the wind. But I like this place because I can run this whole circle and then kind of like, um, we'll test the range because we're, we're, un we're uh, down on a hill right here. So maybe this little hill that we're on will uh, make it a little bit harder to get a good signal to really test these uh, Aram antennas. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so these will be the two quads that I'll be doing the test on. Both of these quads are built exactly the same. They're both using the Akon AK32 uh, 20x20 ESC, the Talon F7 flight controller, the TBS Unified Pro 32 Nano VTX, and I'll be running this test at 25 milliwatts just to make it a little bit harder for these antennas. Um, Foxer Aero Pro. Okay, the only thing different between these two builds are the motors and the arm configurations. This one is running the Lumineer 2207's Popo, which I love. And then these are the uh, Xylo or whatever, Xylo 2205's. Um, and then this one is running the hybrid 5-inch uh, SX up front with 6-inch uh, Truex in the rear. And this one is running SX up front with 5.5 wide X arms. Uh, in the rear. Um, arm configuration is probably not going to affect this test, but I'll be doing a video um, for going further into these two configurations. This one's still my favorite, by the way. I'm um, not really digging this wide uh, five and a half. So this is how I'll be doing the test. Uh, this is the same place that I did the Pro 32 Nano VTX um, test, but last time we were over there in that little hut thing. So I'm basically gonna run this this loop right here. There's a sidewalk over there that goes all the way around. There's a lake over there. It goes all the way around and then I'll just land over here. So I'm gonna be running a whole bunch of different tests. The first test I'm gonna run is, I'm just gonna do a baseline test with my regular setup. A um, On my rapid fire, I'm gonna run the TBS Triumph uh, with a, a patch antenna and then I'll run my regular quad with the Axi setup and then that will be the baseline and then I'll swap it out for the Arams or I'm not swap it out but we'll switch quads we'll run the Aram on the receiver and then on the quad and then we'll do another loop see how the video is and then um, because these Aram antennas are uh, dual polarization meaning they're left and right I asked my um, our local multi GP race director and he says that they are legal but that's kind of unofficial because I think he just wanted to uh, see how they perform but uh, we're gonna try and test that dual polarization thing so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna run the same test with the the baseline test except this time I'm gonna fire up a quad and put it right by my feet and then we'll use uh, two channels race band one and two channels that are really close to each other and then we'll see if this dual polarization will interfere with uh, with uh, the signal so that'll kind of simulate a race situation where you know there's a whole bunch of signals um, going back and forth all right so uh, for whatever reason the memory card that I have in here doesn't want to let me record my DVR so I could just run the test and report back to you guys on the results but that would make a pretty lame uh, review so I gotta run back and grab a new memory card ah, the things I do for this video y'all better give me a like comment and subscribe to my channel for all the things I do for you All right, let's try this again.
All right, so I just did the baseline run. So the next run is I'm gonna plug in the Aram and I'm still running my baseline one with my Axie. So the next test, I'm gonna plug in my Aram and stick it right by my feet. I'm gonna have to modify the, the, uh, the path that I'm flying a little bit because over the hill, I, I couldn't see uh, line of sight and uh, I saw someone walking their dog and they're over there. So I'm gonna fly a little bit higher up. Uh, it shouldn't affect that test too much. Well, that didn't work out as you can see in the video um, the video was actually fine but what messed up was because I have both of my quads bound on crossfire on the same transmitter and I had one quad like right between my feet and then when I got over here the uh, the quad fail safed and uh, I lost it somewhere over here hopefully it's not in the lake because the last thing I saw was this tree right here I'm gonna look for this quad, but um, um, I think it's safe to say that the dual polarization thing worked fine because I mean the video was perfectly fine. What gave out was the crossfire signal. So uh, give me some time. Let me see if I can find this quad. Hopefully it's not in the water. <laughs> if it is, uh, we already got our baseline test. Um, I just got to run through the Aram tests and see what happens. <laughs> See those bubbles right there? That's my quad. <laughs> so the last thing I saw in my goggles was that tree right there and I saw a little flash of that tree in the, the canopy top. And after that signal went out, I searched around and there it is. Well, I got the baseline test that I needed so I'm just gonna run the rest of the test before it gets too dark but if anyone wants a neutron with a little bit of water damage it's right here <laughs> so now i'm going to test the range of the arrows i'm just going to fly over here and just go straight line and see how far we can go on the uh, pro 32 nanos i was able to hit the um, the little gazebo on the far end of the track uh, see if these can go past it So I'm just going to run one more test before I head out. I'm going to simulate a lot of uh, interference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit inside this metal bleacher right here. So I'm going to sit inside this bleacher and then simulate like flying in a goofy environment like a warehouse or something. So uh, we'll see if all this metal surrounding me has any effect on the arums.
All right, so based off my initial test of the air uh, antennas, uh, I can't say that I would recommend them. I don't know if the tests are kind of uh, tainted by my backpack being about 300 grams lighter, but uh, I can definitely say that the range is not as good as a, a regular axis setup with a Triumph and a patch antenna on the receiver. The overall image doesn't look as good. When I was flying, I noticed the images look a little bit grainy, a little bit dirty. And uh, the definitely like the penetration, like when I hit this far corner of the, um, of the track where I'm kind of like under this hill, on the arums, I completely lost signal. I couldn't see, so I had to punch out to uh, get my signal back. But with the um, the baseline test, with the Axie stubby on the quad and the regular uh, patch, um, I was still able to get some video um, when I was, you know, over the hill. Initial test of the arums, I would say probably uh, not recommended for now, but. It, it is a little bit hard to just say definitely that they're they suck because um, uh, I only flew I don't know about two packs over here doing various tests but I will be testing it further in the coming week to see um, if they actually perform well enough to use in a race or not so uh, for you people that don't make videos like this um, this kind of crap happens all the time we run into technical problems all the time I just I just lost a quad in the water. I uh, I catch quads on fire. I run them into br uh, trees and stuff, just for the sake of making these videos. So um, at the end of the videos, I always say like you know if if you appreciate these videos, you know it would help me if you bought stuff from my website or you know from my affiliate links. It's stuff like this. I mean today was like a you know three hundred dollar. Uh, day for me because I just lost a quad in the water so it would really I would really appreciate it if you guys you know bought stuff from my store or click the affiliate links on my um, on my YouTube videos and websites but anyways um, thanks for watching and I hope you found my misery uh, entertaining and uh, I'll see you in the next one peace